Okay, hey guys. Um, so the last time we went over this uh, whole algorithm, I mean code, and I did not explain a lot about it. So right now I was thinking of going over it again just to give it you a feel of what we actually are doing over here. So Kruskal's algorithm is one of those algorithms which uh, you use in order to find the minimum spanning tree in a graph. Okay, so we had studied one of this uh, kind of algorithms before. It was called the Prim's algorithm. But um, the main difference between the Prim's algorithm and the Kruskal's algorithm is that the Prim's algorithm uses the concept of visiting nodes, okay? But the Kruskal's algorithm deals with the concept of visiting edges. So in Kruskal's algorithm, we are visiting edges after edges after edges. And in Prim's algorithm, we are visiting node after node after node. Now, I read, it, read somewhere that um, you could not use Kruskal's algorithm in very densely populated nodes and um, you can use Prim's algorithm in those densely populated areas okay it seems legitimate I, I don't know the reason if you know the reason please let me know I mean I, I don't know S straight up um, so what we do here is the first thing we define a matrix obviously the adjacency, adjacency matrix which we're going to use in order to get the graphical representation of the graph in computer format and then you have this little piece of um, array goodness, which is called as a parent array, and it stores the values of the parents of the nodes. Okay, I mean the parents of the nodes, the nodes which are the parent of their nodes. Mm, interesting. Then we have the minimum value, that is uh, our all-around minimum. Then you have u and v, which are the variables which you store uh, to get the coordinates of the next of the particular node. And then you have the number of edges. Now this is important in Kruskal's algorithm. We did not see this in Prim's algorithm, but we are seeing it over here. Because here we are checking the number of edges which we want to skip, okay? And the number of times we will run the loop is based on the number of edges we have collected and not the number of nodes we have scanned. Interesting. It is actually interesting, very interesting. Then you have the total, which is going to store the total weight of the minimum spanning tree. So this is very simple actually, this is the part where we take the input from the user and you know, take input from the user, simple. And if the input is 0, you replace it by a 999, which is the maximum value which you can store. I mean, it is the value which you do not even expect to enter into your program, okay? Now here we are just in initializing the parent array to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, yeah, 5 zeros because it goes from uh, i equal to 0 through i equal to 4 because i is less than 5. I explained this before too. So, okay, let's just look at the algorithm. Maybe I should write it. This is where the algorithm starts. So, while number of edges is less than 5. Simple enough. You want to execute this 5 times because there are 4, or 4 times because there are 4 edges. Total. Minimum is equal to 999 as we've not said over there. Uh, for int i equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus this is just the checking uh, the minimum value in the whole array so this will go and check the most minimum value in the entire array okay once you get the minimum value you will come here and check obviously you're going to give the values of i to u and j to v in order to check it out here because you can't use i out here and j out here so you have to use some variables in order to use those values outside the loops so you go a while parent the view is not equal to zero. Now this will go and check if there is a loop which exists. If the loop exists, then if if u is equal to if v is equal to u, it means that the loop exists. Okay? But if it's not equal to u, it means that there is no loop which exists. <coughs> so that's pretty awesome. This is one way to check loop if the loops exist. I think there are a few other ways, but I, I'm not aware of them. This is the only way which I was taught to do it. So yeah. Um, number of edges plus plus so here if this is true you will do number of edges plus plus then you go system it out edge found edge is obviously from u to v because u is i and v is j so uh, then you go minimum plus minimum simple total plus equal to minimum so the total value will increase goes the weight okay this is the interesting part now here you are changing the value of the parent okay so what you're doing is you're setting u as the parent of v. Now this is interesting. I, I, I encourage everybody to go and take a piece of paper and draw this or whatever, draw this algorithm 
and compile it yourself so that you could get a better view of what you're doing okay now what you're doing is you're setting the that you're telling the computer or the whatever that the parent of this node is stored over here or vice versa I mean the parent of like if you can consider it vice versa also because in a non-directed graph suppose one and two one and two are connected so either two can be the parent of one or one can be the parent of two it doesn't matter it's a non-directed graph if it was if it were a directed graph it did matter okay it does matter so you must be wondering that if this is checking the minimum value every single time each time this will get the same value right check again this will get the same value every single time if I'm not changing anything over here so in order to not get the same value over and over again what we do is we go matrix I J and uh, obviously I and J are not available so we go U V equal to matrix V U equal to 999 now why did I do this UV and VNU because in a non directed graph if you check it along its diagonal the graph is reflective okay the matrix is reflective because it's a non directed graph if it, if it were a directed graph this would not be valid this statement will never be valid for a directed graph so if you have a directed graph you should probably just do UV okay just do U, UV not UV and VU Okay, now we are, I'm going to consider a non directed graph, so I did this. And finally, we print that our answer is system.out.print ln the, okay, the weight of the min fanning tree is, and that is total. And we're done okay so let's l run the program and see what happens okay it's running okay and I got the answer that is the weight of the minimum spanning tree is 70 thanks for watching have a nice day